First of all, thank you very much for uh, brilliant uh, presentations. Uh, my name is Malik Sidis. I'm myself an Afghan. Uh, I'm working here for the Agencies for Human Rights for eight years almost after the Taliban collapse. My experiences from Afghanistan is that the international community has made two main mistakes, I would rather say. The first one, after the Taliban collapse, the Afghans received a momentum, a change, that the international community did not choose the right partners for the changes. They went back to the warlords and the war criminals. By saying that, the international community tried to implement the values of human rights, democracy, rule of law through the war criminals, which is uh, very paradoxical, I think. The second uh, very diff difficult issue in <coughs> Afghanistan and the role of the international community is the lack of coordination amongst themselves. Look to the uh, American strategy and then look to the uh, European Union's uh, mission and our vision in Afghanistan. You can see the difference. One say we are here to fight the terror, the other say we are here to, uh, uh, to provide security. Not the security only in the field of political security, but they are going to, to try to do some economic social security too. I think which is very, very uh, proper. Uh, the second uh, issue that I would like to mention is the lack of a lot of definitions in Afghanistan. Where we are, are we a post-war country or are we a conflict country? Where is the international community's mandate in Afghanistan in such a condition? If you are talking about the human rights issues, we need a strong government or a strong state who can deliver the human rights for our Afghan citizens. But if you do not have, then according to international law, we need to use the international humanitarian law where the Geneva Convention became the more important elements for supporting the Afghan people. But now the question is who is responsible for the victims in Afghanistan during the military operations? Are they responsible, the governors of Afghanistan or the international community? That's the question. And the last and uh, final remark, I would like to say uh, this is a question uh, for the panel. Is somebody may say that yes, the Taliban uh, are the enemies, not the opposition. For me, the opposition is the creator of alternative or the thoughts who could take over the, the government peacefully for any uh, changes. But do we have in Afghanistan a position? Not, any, not only any. Thank you. Thank you um, for the question and many remarks. I hope Mr. Rahim Mujaddi. Mujadedi uh, will not uh, speak as lengthy, but, but please, um, where are you? Oh, over here, sorry. So the floor is yours. Yes, I was expecting to speak a little longer. I know the time strength is there, but um, there were from some very interesting uh, presentations. I would like to comment on three points. The background of the present situation in Afghanistan, uh, I agree very much with Mr. Jahanpur, where he says that we have to look into ourselves here in the West as well and see whether we have also some responsibility in, what, in the situation going on in Afghanistan today. Uh, the Afghan people uh, were very appreciative of the support they received from uh, the free world in fighting the uh, Soviet Union at that time. But the West did not ensure that the support they sent were ending in the right hands in Afghanistan. Uh, the material uh, economic support sent through the ISI, the Inter-Service Intelligence in, in Pakistan, was channeled to the most extremist uh, groups inside Afghanistan, those who are today part of the, uh, of the opposition. Whether you see Hikmatyar, or you see the Haqqani group, or 
the Taliban for, the, for that uh, sake, they were all supported by, by the West uh, resources. So uh, that background we should be aware of and try to uh, avoid such mistakes in, in the future. The current escalation is the other point I wanted to uh, mention. I think that there are a lot of uh, reasons contributing to the escalation today. Uh, the lack of coordination, as uh, Mr. Sates mentioned, between uh, the international community and the Afghan government on one side, the uh, shortcomings of the Afghan government, uh, corruption, uh, inability to provide uh, alternative livelihood for the people of Afghanistan, no jobs, no recreation. Uh, we also have uh, the disregard from, the, from parts of the international community towards the uh, cultural uh, sensitivities in Afghanistan. Uh, we have the uh, indiscriminate bombardments, which causes a lot of uh, civilian casualties, and uh, things like that. So uh, these, these have to be addressed in a, uh, in, a, in a large package if you want to find a solution for the solution, for the Afghanistan problem. And uh, some of the elements that could be considered for uh, initiating a solution would be serious negotiations where groundwork has to be made in order to convince the, the Taliban and the opposition to come to the negotiating table. Uh, uh, confidence uh, measures have to be, uh, confidence building measures have to be taken. Uh, and then there should be proper support for this peace initiative. We have since uh, 2003 the uh, Peace and Reconciliation Commission in Afghanistan, which has almost no resources at all, uh, but has been able to to convince over 8,000 uh, armed fighters to drop their weapons and join uh, civilian life, return to normal life. Uh, while Mr. Uh, Jahanpur mentioned that one American soldier costs $1 million in Afghanistan. Had one invested $1 million for us for a proper, effective peace, uh, peace uh, initiative, we'd have achieved a lot of, a lot of result. And uh, areas such as uh, reconstruction and development, this will be the final remark. Re areas such as uh, reconstruction and development has to be addressed. Uh, creation of jobs and alternative opportunities. The drug uh, issue is also a very major issue, something that provides uh, resources for the Taliban and the opposition to, to uh, pr provide means for their fighters. Uh, and uh, we should invest in education and uh, training in order to uh, ha have a better future for the Afghans. Thank you. Thank you, sorry for being a bit rude. Um, and finally, Mr. Anas Finger, and being a journalist, I know you will probably be very right I'll on. I'll be brief. Um, uh, my name is, is Sir Anas Finger, I'm a journalist from The Daily Worker here. Uh, my question is, uh, I, I will put it short uh, to all of you, would a total w withdrawal of troops not help so uh, Afghanistan could be rebuilt? Uh, especially if, if uh, Arne Sen could uh, comment uh, on this, but also the others, uh, if they could comment. And then I'll just say that uh, I think the last minutes showed that there are uh, experts, Afghan experts, here in this audience. So I think it's, it's not a very good uh, explanation uh, Gunnar Olsen comes with. Uh, I, could, I think we could have a, had a very interesting discussion with the real experts. Thank you, Anna Svinger, and I promised that Søren Schmidt would be allowed to, to start the final round. So please, Søren, the floor is yours. Uh, well, uh, on this uh, issue of uh, military withdrawal, I think it is necessary to be realistic. Uh, whatever force has been made, the situation is such as of today that if you initiate a complete uh, withdrawal as of now, you most probably will have an even worse conflict and, 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 and even escalate the ongoing uh, civil war which exists there. I mean, the, the, we cannot undo the mistakes of the past uh, by somehow uh, imagining that uh, we are at a situation where we were in 2001. We have unfortunately created a hell of a fix for ourselves. This is 